Hi everyone. BCA 101 Introduction to Computers and this is the notes. These are the notes from Friday. We're on week three, just finished week three. Monday we did the unit completion for unit one and Wednesday we didn't have any class because of snow. So today we started out I talked a little bit about code from our previous outline. We talked about source code and we talked about writing code and lots of people responded in the outline to the advantages of being able to code. We talked a little bit about jobs and we talked about STEM and I also talked about the importance of being able to design something to be able to do coding in relationship to the learning that exists, the problem solving and so forth. So there's more to it than just becoming a programmer. We talked a little bit about grit during the day and we'll move on over here. So then I mentioned open source and we talked about that a little bit. And then we went into why we use technology, why we use technology devices and we talked about they do things very fast if the program is accurate if the program's well done and the data going in is good they can be very accurate they can handle large amounts of data and they can function day in and day out with high reliability it's kinda of like thinking if you got an employee they work pretty fast don't make mistakes, can do a lot of work, but if they're not reliable, they're not really much good. And the computers in old days weren't nearly as reliable as they are now. The outline, there's some information in there dealing with speed and quantity. Then we talk a little bit about the World Wide Web. The World Wide Web is separate from the internet, okay? The World Wide Web that runs on the internet. The internet's the infrastructure that allows the World Wide Web to work. We can create web pages using hypertext markup language. We can use a browser to view those pages and the information is sent around using hypertext transfer protocol. We'll talk more about protocols later on. So we have this ability to use this easy to use method to do communications. And communications don't have to all be through the World Wide Web. They can actually just be sent through the internet, even though this tends to be the way we do that. And so we listed all those communications and talked briefly about them in the one I emphasize with podcasts. They have become extremely popular in recent years. If you're wondering about this, I made a little reference to Saturday Night Live did an excerpt on the um, Serial podcast. So you know they're extremely popular when they're being made fun of on the SNL. <clears throat> we talked a little bit then about search engines. And there's a video in the outline that talks about search engines and the content, how they look through these large arrays. You know, when you look for a term, it doesn't actually go out and look at all the websites. It goes and sees where the term is stored, depending on the search engine, and then that links you to a page that takes you to that information, and then it's key, the order they're in. We will talk more about web utilities on the next session. And so this was representing a little bit of review from the outline and some key things that we talked about mostly from unit one. So a little review of some key things. We talked about the internet and we actually talked about local area networks trying to emphasize the difference between a LAN and a WAN. So you can have, we started out, you could have a couple offices Maybe this one in Cedar Falls, which has a little network. 
then you can have your main business here let's say in Mason City and if you want to communicate we use the example you want to keep a list of all the uh, products you have on hand you could store them let's say Mason City and then allow the office in Cedar Falls to come up and check what products are on hand where you could do it through a internet service provider connecting in the internet and use a virtual private network which we learn about more later on to connect those two offices what sometimes is confusing for people is some bigger companies they can use a service provider now you know say said internet service provider here they can just use a service provider and you could connect your two offices using a service provider instead of going through the internet here they could guarantee a certain amount of information that will be sent through they can guarantee a certain bandwidth so bits per second to you but typically at a higher cost than it would cost you to go into the internet and use that <clears throat> but they could guarantee you this all right for example um, years ago mercy here in town they connected to a service provider to nova michigan and years ago then they pay for that bandwidth it's not that much now but that was probably 10 15 years ago but it was relatively expensive, somewhere around $20,000 a month. <clears throat> and that was counting their connections to small clinics and hospitals in the area. That price has gone down, but still, it's more expensive to pay for a direct connection than to go through the Internet. Why not always go through the Internet? You don't have any control of the information while it's in the Internet. Whereas here, the service provider would make some guarantees for you. Well, that's it for the review. Um, we talked about a few other th things. I should just mention here, we talked about software. Um, you have the software on your device, your laptop, or your PC, or you could have the software come from a cloud, for example, Google Docs. You can share software on a network, but you have to, and that was the example here, but you have to make sure your licensing is correct for that software. Just because you have a network and you buy a piece of software, you can't distribute that to lots of other devices unless your licensing tells you you can. And we gave a couple examples in class. That's it.